Welcome to the Burned In Teacher Podcast. I'm Alexis Shepard. You guys may know me as the Afro Educator. For the past few weeks, I've been taking over for Amber, and I am excited to empower you to teach and live authentically. Here on the Burned In Teacher Podcast, we're still going to be keeping it real with conversations that inspire you to take actionable steps today so that you can grow through your burnout and teach and live with joy. Ready to take your next step? Let's get started. Hey there, Burned In Teachers. I'm excited to be back with you for the third and final episode of my podcast takeover for this Tan with Educators series. First of all, I just want to say that I am so, so grateful to Amber and to the Burned In Teacher community for supporting me during this takeover and opening your hearts and your minds and your ears to my perspective. It truly means so, so much. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. If you have listened to the other episodes in our series so far, then welcome back. In my first two episodes, I did a deep dive into toxic teacher narratives in episode 109, and then in episode 110, which was the last episode, I explored these narratives and how they contribute to the teacher-administrator relationship and the way teachers perceive how we can or can't address our school leaders. In this episode, I'm going to offer some actionable steps that any teacher or even admin anywhere can take to begin establishing or growing a culture of wellness in your building. So we've addressed the toxic narratives that are the basis for much of our limiting beliefs. And like I just said, we've discussed how those limiting beliefs can affect our relationships with our principals and our assistant principals and our school leaders. Now is the time for us to integrate the conversations from the previous two episodes so we can take steps to creating an environment that supports rather than suppresses teacher wellness. We already know that the problem of burnout and overwhelm is systemic. Through no fault of our own, teachers have been subjected to a host of expectations that are impossible to meet on a consistent basis. A sustainable classroom career is becoming more and more of an anomaly. There's a national teacher shortage that I could reference. We know that 50% of new teachers leave within the first five years. There's also data out there that suggests and indicates that fewer people even want to be teachers, right? They see what we go through and they see our experiences and they're like, I'm not signing up for that. In the last episode, I even went into a little detail about the teacher shortage crisis in my state and how many thousands of openings exist uh, or existed at the beginning of the school year and how many teachers left by the midpoint of the school year. We have to reimagine systems where whole teachers are prioritized in the same way as whole students. As a teacher, it's difficult to reach the whole student when you aren't whole or at least working towards it yourself. Addressing the needs of the whole student requires an immense investment of time, um, emotional, mental, and even physical energy. We have to be at our best if this is going to happen. Self-care and that wellness component can't just be about what we can do ourselves. Yes, it begins with the individual, but our communities and our villages also have to be invested in promoting the well-being of each other. It's going to be difficult to maintain my wellness as a priority if you don't think that my wellness is a priority too. Creating cultures of wellness in schools is all about developing norms and readdressing systems that get at some of the chronic issues, most of which stem from teachers not being in rooms where decisions are made. So when I say cultures of wellness, I'm talking about an environment that fosters connection, empathy, and equity. Cultures of wellness extend beyond the, hey, how are you? It's about investing in creating an environment 
where how you are truly matters and preemptive actions are taken to address probable stressors and provide staff with real support for their struggles. So let's dream. Let's talk action. Let's talk about what this could look like. Here are a few things for you to consider as we close one school year and reflect on how we can make the next one better. I believe that all of the recommendations I'm about to give here are best executed if teacher and admin are involved. Remember, it takes the community. However, if this is impossible or you're really nervous about starting at the admin level, these are items that can be coordinated by small groups of teachers, such as your grade level team, or maybe even a small group of, say, you and your teacher friends want to get together and try some of these suggestions out so that when you go to your admin, you already have a little bit of experiential data to provide. Now, before we attempt to shift norms and change systems for our entire school, we first have to start with that change of self. We talked a lot about this in episode 109 and the importance of reframing our own beliefs about what it actually means to teach well. So my first action step is to be mindful of opportunities to use your self-work to help a colleague. The systems and cultures in our schools and around teaching are so deeply embedded that we can't just tell our colleagues to do A or B. They have to demonstrate a readiness to receive it. Oftentimes, the individuals who need or would benefit from the change the most are the ones who are most resistant. I know that seems so counterintuitive because you would think that the people who need this work the most, the people who would benefit from this the most, would be the ones who would be clamoring for it, and oftentimes they aren't. Here's the thing, y'all, you aren't going to change anyone's mind, but you can share your experiences. What I found is that when you share your experiences, you invite someone else into the idea that they too can create boundaries, for example, or lead a life that doesn't entail working endless hours after school. This sharing opens the door to influence. By sharing your experiences, you may, and likely will, inspire or motivate someone to reflect on their own situation, and maybe they're inspired to reframe their own narrative too. The next action step is to consider or imagine what systems could be in place that would help you and other staff be better, longer. This is the part where we start to take action in uprooting those old norms and seeding new ones. This might look like consistent wellness checks. I actually do this weekly with my students in my classroom. It's a simple Google form with five questions that asks things like where my student's head is at, what I can support them with, and something that they're looking forward to within the next week. It's a way for me to make sure I'm aware of what's going on with them. Similarly, administration could do wellness checks with staff, asking where their head is at and how they could be supported within the next week, month, semester, quarter, or whatever interval works. My recommendation is to start with the grading period. In my district, every four and a half weeks, there's either a progress report or a report card. Since the end of a grading period tends to be stressful with finalizing grades and conferences, this might be a good time for school leaders to check in with staff to find out how they're really doing and to provide tangible support that helps teachers in their overwhelm and frustration. Keep in mind that this will be a new system, so starting with more spaced checks will help create a routine that's sustainable. That's the key here. If you're interested in taking a look at the wellness check I do with my students, or you're even ready to use this for yourself, I have a link to the free template in the show notes. In addition to the wellness checks, school leaders or teachers at your school could also establish an informal wellness committee. Now, y'all have to know that generally I try to stay as far away from the word committees as possible. For me personally, when I think of committees, I think of these obligatory groups that we have to participate in for our schools where we meet a lot and it seems that nothing gets done. 
When I say establishing a wellness committee, I just mean an informal group of co-workers, colleagues, or even teacher friends who can be dispatched to check on staff members who need immediate support. For example, let's say that your administrator or your school leader notices that a certain teacher in the building has something that they're really struggling with and they really need somebody there to listen or they need to know that somebody in the building is there for them. Somebody from this informal wellness committee or a group of people could follow up with that teacher and just provide a space for that teacher to express how they feel, to know that someone is there for them. Oftentimes, we feel like we're going through things alone. I know many of us have that one or two teacher friends that we feel like we can go to, and that is an amazing thing. But I think it's important that as an entire collective, we feel in our school buildings that we are truly supported by one another and not just by the one or two people that we've established close relationships with. Another action step to shift norms towards creating a culture of wellness is follow-up meetings. So a couple of minutes ago, I talked about having that quarterly or bi-quarterly wellness check. It was that simple Google form that teachers fill out to quickly let administrators know how they're doing, what's going on, and how they can be supported. In these follow-up meetings, administrators might set aside 30 to 45 minutes within the week or two of the wellness checks just to provide a listening space. This can be done by grade level teams, for example. At my school, when we have meetings, we generally distribute information according to grade levels. So all of the sixth grade team will meet or all of the seventh grade team will meet. Similarly, these meetings could be hosted at the grade level tier and this space could function as a mastermind of sorts where team members can offer support and collaborate around solutions to problems that may be causing stress. It would also be really important for administrators to be involved in these meetings, to listen to what their staff are going through, and to be able to also problem solve with us. This would be similar to the way that we place our students in collaborative groupings during class, and we allow them to bounce ideas off of one another and to problem solve and support one another. These follow-up meetings for the wellness checks would work the same way. These follow-up meetings could also be held one-on-one. The same way that teachers do one-on-one check-ins with our students, administrators could do one-on-one check-ins with staff members. Now, this option is probably a little less realistic as we know that school leaders tend to have lots on their plates from the different expectations they're trying to meet from the state and district levels as well. But if you're in a school where your administrator prioritizes one-on-one check-ins with staff, maybe you're in a smaller school with a smaller staff, or maybe your administrator is just really, really dedicated to making sure that every staff member receives a certain amount of one-on-one time each year, then this may be an option that works best for your school building. And last, but certainly not least, of the actionable steps that we can take to shift the norms and begin to establish cultures of wellness is ongoing self-care education for teachers and administrators. Before I continue with this tip, let me first clear up that when I talk about self-care, I'm talking about things like creating boundaries, streamlining our processes, And doing the work of discovering who we are as people and how that influences our teaching and vice versa. So in essence, when I say self-care, I'm talking about doing the work to become your best self, which in turn will lead to you being a better, more fulfilled teacher. I'll include some of my most favorite ongoing self-care education programs in the show notes, but to mention a few of them, Um, The 40-hour teacher work week from Angela Watson is incredible. I haven't participated in it myself, but I know a couple of people that have, and I hear about it often, and it seems like an excellent program. It's comprehensive. You're able to receive support through the program as well as directly from Angela Watson, and I think that it's just an incredible opportunity for teachers to not only begin to work on reframing that narrative, but to also have some action and support behind what that looks like to stream line processes so that you're working closer to 40 hours a week as opposed to the 60, 80, or maybe even 100 hours a week that you're currently working. She's also just recently launched the 40-Hour Leadership Club, which seems like it could be an incredible opportunity for some administrators out there as well. 
Another program that I love is the Happy Teacher Revolution. I am a certified Happy Teacher Revolutionary myself, and I love the fact that I can facilitate wellness groups for the teachers at my school or in my district. And of course, I can't forget Burned in Teacher courses. Of course, how could I be on the Burned in Teacher podcast and not talk about the Burned in Teacher Mastermind and Burned in Teacher University? Amber has done some incredible work to help support you. If you have not checked out the Burned in Teacher Mastermind, there will be another cohort, I believe sometime later in 2021, which would be an incredible opportunity for you to be a part of to start growing through your burnout. And doing that self-work, that is the first step in creating that culture of wellness. Finally, I quickly wanted to shout out the National Wellness Institute. I actually discovered the National Wellness Institute a couple of years ago when I was seeking organizations who did work around wellness. I had no idea that this organization existed, but it is incredible. The membership is around $150 a year, but for $150 a year, you get unlimited access to tons of courses around workplace wellness and other holistic wellness topics. There are certifications that you can take. There's a national conference they have every year, and it's just a great resource if you're looking to expand your knowledge of wellness education, and maybe you even want to become certified so that you can educate others about wellness too. Here's the thing, creating and maintaining a culture of wellness is a win-win-win situation. It's a win for teachers, it's a win for administrators, and it's a win for our students. Cultures of wellness promote trust between administration and staff. It leads to sustainability for teachers and classrooms. It helps to produce that concerted pushback against the norms of toxic teacher narratives. So instead of one or two individual teachers pushing back, it's an entire collective of a school building. It also increases creativity and overall improves staff morale. And last, but maybe most importantly, it gives us the energy and the capacity to continue doing the work for our students. Reframing toxic teacher narratives is the foundation for exercising our agency. When we view ourselves and our roles beyond the limiting beliefs, we can advocate for long overdue change. We can also have the confidence to invite our school leaders to step up and be part of that change by investing in co-creating cultures of wellness with us. It's not all on us to affect change in our schools, but we can spark little fires of change that ignite a larger movement. It's not always easy, but change is always worth it. I'm so proud of you. You've just taken another step towards managing your burnout. Until next time, take care. Hey y'all, Alexis here. If you like what you hear and you want to see more of my take on systemic changes for schools and be empowered to teach more authentically, you can find me on Instagram at The Afro Educator. You can also visit theafroeducator.com and be the first to join my email list. I'm working on some exciting new things for teachers and I would love for you to be a part of my community so you can be first to get updates. Until the next episode, take care.